Hello, everyone. You're listening to Unlocking Greatness Podcast. Feel free to call me Z. So we're in the book of Daniel, and I'm just having a really good time um, soaking into it. I wish there was some kind of way I could, you know, show you could actually see my Bible and see. Oh, my goodness. All of the pages and everything is highlighted. But in Daniel chapter, we, we, we went over a section um, uh, when Daniel interpreted the dream for um, King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, we went over all of that, how God gives wisdom, God gives knowledge, how Daniel sought him out. Then we went over how um, Daniel's friend Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, let me get the story right, were placed into the, 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 the burning furnace and how uh, God rescued them. Then we went over how God warns us, you know, um, King Neb was warned. Um, basically of the way he was, you know, treating some people and and of his pride, basically. And uh, he didn't repent of it. And um, for seven times, whether that means a season or whatever, he was just kind of sun out there. Now we're getting to a section um, where I want to talk about how God um, elevates us and how he protects us. So I'm not sure if I'm going to call this God protects or God elevates, but it'll be one of those titles. But there was one part I left out of the the last section we did. I talked about how... um, King Nebuchadnezzar was humbled. But what I did not talk about is the very next chapter, chapter five, his son. He had a son called King Belshazzar. Now I won't walk through his story because I want to jump into a whole nother part of the book of Daniel. But the bottom line is uh, he did not listen. He was arrogant. Um, He is the one. um, Let let me just read just a little bit of it because I don't want to skip over it. But this is what I think. uh, I think Neb said to him, he says, um, But when his heart, I'm in uh, Daniel chapter, you guys just got to bear with me because my Bible's marked up so much. Daniel chapter five. Let me just read just a little bit of this. Just bear with me a moment. It says, um, King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in uh, the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. So that the king and his nobles um, and his wives and concubines may drink for them. So I'm going to skip through all of this, but they basically was just having a good old time sitting and drinking from these sacred cups and goblets and things from, I think, the temple from Jerusalem. Uh, Suddenly, I'm in verse five. Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale and he was so frightened that his knees knocked together and his legs gave way. And then I'm going to jump on down. He basically just said, hey, who can read this? And in verse 12, it says uh, this man, Daniel, whom the king called Belshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding and the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles and solve difficult problems. So they basically called for Daniel. And again, I'm just jumping because this is not the premise of this section of the lesson, but I skipped over this last time. Um, uh, but basically, um, uh, the king said, Hey, if you can, if you can, if you can read this writing that's put on the wall, I'm going to give you all of this stuff. And Daniel's like, keep your stuff. I don't need it, but let me just tell you what God said. So I'm going to jump, jump around a little bit. And verse 20 says, but when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, uh, I, I got to back up cause this is just too good. I, I have to, I am in Daniel chapter five, verse 18. I'm not going to rush this. So. Someone don't have time to hear all of this. It's okay. I I won't be offended. Daniel chapter five, verse 18. O king, the most high God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Because of the high position he gave him, all the peoples and nations and men of every language dreaded and feared him. Notice how it says God gave all of that to King Neb. We strive for it so much, don't we, in life at times? And it, and it says that God gave him greatness and glory and splendor. Because of the high position he gave him, all the peoples and nations and men of every language dreaded and feared him. Those the king wanted to put to death, he put to death. Those he wanted to spare, he spared. Those he wanted to promote, he promoted. And those he wanted to humble, he humbled. Now listen to this. I'm in verse 20. But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride... He was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven away from people and given the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild uh, donkeys and ate grass like cattle and his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the most high God is sovereign over the kingdom of men and sets them over anyone he wishes. That's that's said several times through the book of Daniel, just so you all know. 
Now listen to this warning. But you, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all of this. I'm in verse 23. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You had the goblets from his temple bought to you and your, and your nobles and your wives and your concubines drink uh, wine from them. You praise the gods of silver and of gold and of bronze and iron and wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life in all your ways. Therefore, he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. This is what the inscription. This is the inscription that was written. And I may be pronouncing this wrong, but it says many, many teko parsing. This is what these words mean. God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. You have been weighed and on the scales found wanting. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes, the, the, Medes, the Medes and the Persians. Then at Belshazzar's command, David Daniel was clothed uh, in purple. You guys know I love the color purple. Uh, a gold chain was placed around his neck and he was proclaimed um, the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. So that's the end of wrapping up the last part uh, of the lesson that I did. And now I'm going into this third part. I, I just wanted to, to mention that because that, that still that speaks to arrogance and pride. And again, I know my podcast is motivating and building you up, but I also have to just put that tag on there that God hates arrogance and pride. And, and this, I should say, young king, um, he didn't learn from what his father had just went through. And he turned around and, 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 and did a great dishonor. So anyway, I just want to wrap that part up. And now I'm going to go into kind of a better part. Um, and, uh, this next section I want to talk about is Daniel being thrown into the lion's den. And I think I'm going to call this section, God protects or God elevates. So now I'm ready for this part. Here's the spin. I want to take on this. You don't have to worry about when people are coming against you. You don't have to worry about what people are saying or doing or coming against you, trying in any way, in any way, fashion or farm, uh, 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 in any way or, or fashion, trying to do anything to harm or um, what is the word scheme against you? You know how sometimes whether you're in the workplace or sometimes it could be family members or friends and you find out somebody's doing something or said something behind your back or trying to set you up or what have you. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing example of what happens when you come against, uh, I guess I should say a man of God, but when someone comes against um, someone who represents God. So listen what happened to this with Daniel's in the lion's den. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of skip around a little bit. Um, it says, uh, now this is Darius who just took over um, uh, the kingdom after uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's son, you know, um, died. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom uh, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. I'm going to jump around a little bit in verse three. Now, Daniel was so distinguished. Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. And I'm going to jump on down to uh, verse the end of verse four. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligence. Okay. Listen to verse five. Finally, these men said, we would never find uh, any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So pick that up a second. Just listen to what I just read. They're jealous and hating on this man. Because he's just, God has just so elevated him. He's not doing anything wrong to him, but they just don't like the fact that, first of all, you're not even from here, right? Uh, we, we, we took over this land. Um, and here you are, you know, one of the top in command. They're saying, it almost reminds you of the story of Jesus. There's no, nothing we can find in him, so we got to figure out something to make up a lie or do something. We got to figure out something to trap him. So listen to this. In verse five, finally, these men said we would never find any basis uh, for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So the administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, O King Darius, live forever. The royal administrators, perfects, uh, um, um, satraps, advisors and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict 
and enforced a decree that anyone who prays, here we go, anyone who prays to any God or man during the next 30 days, except you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, this is very interesting where we're going with this. O king Darius, basically, if they don't, if they don't, if they don't praise you, um, they're going to be thrown into the lion's den. So verse eight, now, O king, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing like I don't see nothing wrong with that. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God, just as he'd done before. Then, the, then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and, and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke uh, uh, to him about his royal decree. Now, now listen how they, how they tried to trick Daniel. They, they're going to the king saying, um, didn't you, did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any God or man except you, O king, will be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, uh, the decree stands in accordance with the laws. Now, just so you know, the reason why it says the decree stands in accordance with the laws of the Medes and the Persians, once they put it in the law and I guess some kind of way the king seals it with his signet ring, it cannot be changed. It's, it's impossible. The law has to be enforced. Just so you know, at least that's what I learned from one of my elders Bible study group. And no, I'm not an elder, but I was attending those classes. Um, then they said to the king, Daniel, I'm in verse 13, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the decree that you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He, he was determined to rescue Dan, uh, uh, Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. So he knew he had been tricked and there's nothing he can do about it. He knew the decree had to be honored. Then the men went out as a group to the king and said, oh, king, re remember, you know, basically remember this law you put into place. So in verse 16, so the king gave the order and they bought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continuously rescue you. A stone was bought and placed over the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and the rings of his noble so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. You ever feel like you're in a situation that just it can't it, there's no way out there's no way out that there is no solution it is what it is ain't nothing i can do about it <laughs> and it's just i'm just finished it's just done it's over you ever feel that so the daniel situation might not be changed in verse 18 then the king returned to his place and spent the night without eating and without entertainment being brought to him. And he could not sleep. I'm in verse 19. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continuously been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel. And he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I done anything wrong before you, O king. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted out of the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. When you come out of the lion's den, no wound, no wound is found on you because you trusted in God. You trusted in God to see you through. No matter how bad the situation looks or what you're going through, you trusted in God to see you through. This man was thrown into the lion's den. Verse 24, at the king's command, here we go. This is why you got to be careful with what you say and do. And don't be, don't, don't be, don't be trying to do no underhanded stuff. At the king's command, 
The men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Now, that's pretty gruesome. Going on down in verse 27. Um, I think this is what the king said. Uh, let me just read it. Verse 25. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land. May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and revere the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He rescues and he saves. He rescues. You got to be in some trouble to be rescued, right? He rescues. I pray that that pierces someone's heart right now who's really feeling like God ain't there or they're tired or they don't see any way out or don't know what they're going to do or feels unloved. I pray that that pierces your heart. You're not alone in whatever you're going through. God is able to rescue you even from the lion's den. In verse 27, he rescues and he saves He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. And then it just goes on to say, so Daniel prospered. I think I'm going to end it right there. Now, don't be surprised if I come back and read a little bit more because there's so much more to the book of Daniel that I want to jump into. Um, so much more in Jeremiah that I want to jump into as well. But I pray that your heart has been stirred. I pray that you, um, oh, sorry about that. I pray that you read the whole book of Daniel, get the whole full version of the story because I'm doing my best to kind of rush through it. Um, But I pray that you see uh, how God is able to give the wisdom and the knowledge, how God is the one that, um, Uh, reveals wisdom to us. He's the one who, um, what are some of the topics I gave, who protects us. He's the one who gives us warnings. He's the one who elevates us. The story, it's in the Bible. I don't read it just to read it because I have nothing else to do, you guys. I read it because this is my source. I was in a staff meeting earlier today and um, Uh, The release of my book is coming soon, you guys, just so you know, it's getting closer and closer now. And uh, I have a little bit of a surprise I'm going to announce probably, I don't know, next couple episodes, I'm going to announce a major, give a major announcement. There's some other things going on. I just kind of keep kind of quiet. Um, But I remember saying in the staff meeting, um, someone was trying to figure out, okay, what is the best way that we're going to kind of launch this and let people know about it or what have you. And I says, well, really, we don't have to start from scratch in the least bit. Um, We need to find examples of people who've done a brilliant job, who we admired in the way that they delivered and did things. First of all, pray to God and get wisdom and guidance from God. Let me start there. But I said, but the, the, the solution is pretty easy. Find someone who's done an amazing job that we respect, who, who's just really laid out the blueprint figure out what we like or don't like about it. Uh, of course, commit it to God in prayer and do better. You may say, well, how does that tie into this? Whatever I'm going through in my life, whatever stages, whether it's finances, business, home, marriage, kids, health, whatever, I always try to find someone in the Bible who's an example and who went through, who did something. I don't read this just because I have nothing else to do or because I'm trying to be some religious woman, you know, it actually hurts my business in many ways by being online, talking about God and, and trying to uplift people with the word of God. I think I've told you guys that I had a couple clients who we pretty much we had the accounts. It was done deal. And when they look me up, you know, my podcast trends higher than my, my staffing agency, just so you know, a lot higher, a whole lot higher because I do a ton of these podcasts now. And so when you, when, you, when, you, when you look me up, you see all of my YouTube stuff and me crying on camera about stuff and encouraging people and some people that makes them uncomfortable. So I've actually, it actually in some ways have hindered, um, in some ways I should say, 
um, uh, the things that I do in the business world. But to me, there's no comparison because my source is here with God. He comes first. So whatever I'm going through, I look for examples in the Bible. What are the examples we can get from King Nebuchadnezzar? Why do you think I, I read about him the last couple episodes? What's the examples we can get? What are the examples that we can draw from when someone comes against you? How did Daniel handle that? What are the examples when the impossible was put before you? Remember when the king came to him and said, interpret this dream? He's like, okay, well, what's the dream? Well, I ain't going to tell you. You got to tell me what the dream is. That's a mess. So what's an example in your life you can think of that you can relate to that? And how did Daniel handle that? Remember, he went to his boy, Shadrach, Meshach, and Bingo. He's like, hey, we got to pray. We got to we got to go to God and ask for mercy and to give us wisdom and guidance. He didn't run around trying to talk to all of King Neb's best friends or whoever and, and, and try to guess at what the dream was. You get my point? Why do you think I read so many times in the Bible when it says that God is the one that establishes the man uh, uh, the, uh, sovereignty over the kingdoms? He's the one that establishes. Why do you think we just read about how they did him wrong and they were trying to trap him? They were trying to trap him. And look what ended up happening. They themselves end up being caught in the trap that they were trying to do. And did you see Daniel break during that time? Did you see him say, let me, you know, maybe uh, I guess it'll be okay. Let me bow down and worship because I don't want to be thrown into a lion's den. And by the way, just a little bit of history with lion's dens back then, when they knew that they were going to be throwing someone in the, in the dens, and this is something I learned from a class I was in, they would almost purposely, I don't want to use the word starve the lions, but they would make sure that the lions have not had anything to eat for a while. That's why the second part of that, when the very people who came against him were thrown in the dens, you notice it says their bones and things were crushed before it even reached the floor. So it really was impossible for this man to be lured down into the dens and to not have been eaten alive. But God's son is angel, just like when Shadrach and Meshach were thrown into the furnace. I'm trying to do something to. I'm just trying to help you. That's it. Before I recorded anything, I just said, God, I've been studying out Daniel and I've been studying out the book of Jeremiah. Is this what you want me to bring to your people? Um, I'm ready to start talking to you all about. Um, some business things. I'm ready to start doing more of the cooking segments and God has really placed it in my heart. I'm so grateful. Um, uh, giving me, I should use, I should use the word permission to start releasing some of my books and some things that I've, um, he's been working with me on and I'm grateful for that. Um, but at the same time, God has also placed it in my heart that this has to be the foundation. This has to be the foundation. So when I come on camera and go before you all, I'm honestly just laying my heart before you. I pray to God before I turn the camera on and I just say, God, what is it that you want them to know? So I pray you've been encouraged. I pray that no matter what you're going through in life, that you can find a story in the Bible. Find someone in here that you can relate to. That's why I'm going through all of these people in the Bible. I think I'm going to talk some more about Elijah or, or maybe even talk about Naomi and Ruth or Esther, you know, get into some of the other stories, because I want you to have examples that you can pull from. I can sit and motivate you all day, but it's going to do nothing if you don't have something to go to on your own as a living example. Well, you know what I mean when I say living example. Anyway, I love you all. I love you. I love you. I pray you've been encouraged by this book of Daniel series. It definitely was not planned. I, I'm just sharing with you all or I just shared with you all what I've been reading just on my own time. And God just put it in my heart. Somebody needs to hear this. So anyway, love you. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness podcast. Bye bye.